Good morning, everyone. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. What do you say this morning? Amen, amen. Listen, today is a great day because not only is the Sabbath, but today is a wonderful day because we have three individuals this week who are going down in the watery grave of baptism. Y'all know how to shout right there, amen, and to God be the glory. I'm going to invite the candidates to come forward right now. If you ask, bring them, yes, come forward today. We're going to do the vows today. Come on, say amen. We're going to do the vows today. We want to affirm them today. We are excited about their commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are excited about what the Lord has done. Can you just, well, but you all can do it. So after I read the vows, just loudly say, I do. Typically, we'll have a mic in your hand, but today we'll just simply say, I do. All right. Let's read the vows. 13, number one says, do you believe that there is one God, Father, and Son, a unity of three co-eternal uh, people and uh, uh, persons? Do you believe that today? Amen. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ? on Calvary as atoning sacrifice for your sins. And do you believe that by God's grace through faith that you are saved from sin and its penalty? Amen. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven you of all of your sins and given you a brand new heart? Amen. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life before the world and even in your home? Amen. Do you believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? Do you covenant to spend time regularly in studying the word of God? Amen. Do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of God's character and a revelation of his will? Is your purpose by the indwelling Christ to keep his law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord, as a memorial of God's creation? Amen. Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus Christ? Amen. Number eight says, do you accept the biblical teachings of spiritual gifts and believe that, again, the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of God's remnant church? Do you believe in church organization? And is it your purpose to worship God and support the church through your tithe and offering, also your personal effort and influence? Amen. Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you honor God for caring but for it? Will you avoid those things that are harmful, such as unclean foods and the use of uh, manufacture of tobacco or alcohol, uh, the use and manufacture of, for any of that, for human consumption, and even the trafficking of narcotics and any other drugs? Do you know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and do you purpose, by the grace of God, to live in harmony with these principles? Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion? And do you so desire to be baptized today as a public declaration of your faith in Jesus Christ? And last of all, do you believe that this church is the church of Bible prophecy that any and everybody are invited to be a part of God's last day church? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Well, come on, say amen. They love Jesus Christ today. I'm excited about it today. We are excited about their vows. We're excited about all the things that God's going to be doing in their life. Is there a motion today to accept them subject to their baptism? It's been moved. Is there a second? I love this. All in favor of saying hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise today for these individuals. You may even go back to your seat. We are thanking God for you today as we momentarily go now to baptism in the next few moments today. Anybody had a good week this week? Amen. Woo, that was a few poll today. Well, listen, we're going to kick it over to our live, right, our live cut in right now as we prepare to go into worship today. Let's worship God today in spirit and in truth on this education Sabbath. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath today. My name is Tim Olson. I am representing First Fidgetal SDA Church. That's right. No, no, no. I didn't stutter. First Fidgetal SDA Church. Fidgetal because we are physical and digital, online and on site, high tech and high touch. As our pastor said, this is a high day in Zion. 
Number one, the number three is so significant to us. It symbolizes perfection, completeness, and wholeness. We just had the baptismal vows, and we just voted into membership, subject to baptism, three saints of God into First Church. We are excited about that baptism. We all can say amen. And also, on this day, this is Education Day. Education Day. This is where we celebrate those who have achieved academic milestones. As you look across our congregation, you will see a number of people regaled in their academic garb, symbolizing either where they went to school or the milestone that they are celebrating. Education is very, very key to us as a congregation, but it's also very, very key to us as a city, as Huntsville-Madison County. You know, according to the American Library Association, the average American community in it, only 40% of its res residents have library cards. 40%. But in Huntsville, Madison County, that number is not 40%. It's not 50%. It's not 60%. It's not 70%. It's not 75%. That number is 76%. 76% of us who live in Huntsville, Madison County have library cards. And we praise God for the educability of our community. Just a couple of other announcements. Number one, we have embarked upon a special project for the homeless community at the Derrick Street Homeless Community. We have been collecting and are still collecting um, brand new undergarments and toiletries for men and women. We have a donation box in the lobby of our church, and we ask for you to continue to contribute to that. That event was originally scheduled for today, the 8th. It has been now moved to August 15th. August 15th. So you still have a chance to participate, and if you are, for example, on site and are not here, you can send your cash contribution through Cash App, and that Cash App will be dollar sign FC. S-D-A-H-S-V, dollar sign, F-C, First Church, S-D-A, Seventh-day Adventist, H-S-V, Huntsville. We look forward to your contributions. Also, if you have been a part of our pictorial directory, if you have taken your picture or scheduled your picture, the last day for your payments is tonight, tonight, July 8th. We are thankful that you are here. We look forward to you being a part of our sermon. The message today will, is entitled, I believe, Do Not Be an Educated Fool. Do not be an educated fool. Thank you so much for joining us. I will see you at the end of service. Again, this is Tim Alston representing First Digital SDA Church. Digital, part physical, digital, part digital. We are high tech and high touch. We are on site and we are online. Thank you, God bless you, and have with us a happy Sabbath. Bye-bye. What well, can we sing together right here? Take me to, take me to the water. Take me to
Amen. Amen. Come on, put your, put your hands together one more time as we celebrate these three individuals who are going down the watery grave of baptism today. Our first individual is Ahmad Baker today. Come on, say amen. amen. Ahmad, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, because you desire as a man, as a young man, to go all the way with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is with privilege now that we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. To God be the glory, Brother Baker. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, won't y'all stand up today? Come on, stand up today. Come on, let's stand as we go through this today. We celebrate these individuals. Bible says all heaven rejoices when somebody gives their life to Jesus Christ. Amen. We have in the pool today, Allison Cole. Come on, say amen. Allison, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, because you desire to be ready to meet your Lord and your Savior when he shall return. It is now with great privilege that we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. To the family and friends that are here celebrating, we praise God for you today as well. Listen, this last individual has been an individual that we've been studying with for the last several decades. Come on, say amen. Y'all hear y'all miss what I said? I said decades of study today. And she has decided to go all the way with the Lord Jesus Christ and to become a part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Come on, say amen, somebody. Today, we are so grateful for Sister Betty Malone, who is giving her life to Jesus Christ once again today and being a part of this last day church. Sister Betty Malone, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, because you have studied, know the truth, and desire to live in it, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen.
You may be seated. Can we give God praise today for the good things, the great things the Lord has and is doing and has done? Today, we want to say praise God for Education Day. We are grateful today for all of our graduates. Can you say amen? amen. God has been good to First Church, and we're so thankful that God has blessed us with so many individuals that have graduated from pre-K or K, all the way to, of course, their collegiate degrees. What you're seeing today is a small representation of individuals who have walked in today in their regalia. Can you say amen today? We know that we have a large congregation of individuals who have received their degrees as well. At this moment, I'm going to invite Dr. Elder uh, Lester Morrow to come forward today, as even before we go into praise and worship, to acknowledge and to celebrate each one of our graduates. Can we say amen today for Dr. Morrow as he comes today? Good morning. We are hoping that this, what you've seen today, would become an annual affair where all of our degreed um, church members will participate as part of the faculty that will be marching in during this time. the graduates, our kindergarten graduate is Reagan Allen. If, if you hear your name and you are here, we're going to invite you to come and join us on the platform. If you are here, and not as, I know, I know, I know, some are so shy. But if you can join us up here, please join us on the platform as well. We have someone we want to give you in hand some information as well. Or if a family member would like to come up and receive this token. Our eighth grade graduates, Adina Moraine. Jidan Morton. <clears throat> Kali Preston. <clears throat> Nishay Thomas. Omega Charles. <laughs> Preston Claybrooks. <laughs> Avery Duggins. <laughs> Gabriel Key. Olivia Ruffin. <clears throat> Malinga, forgive me, Malaysica, Malaysia Wanda. <clears throat> oh. 
our high school graduates, Kerwin Armour. Imani Moran. Kaden Pyfor. Micah Andrews. Shelter. Alish, and Kale Thomas. Our undergraduate graduates, Zerara Joseph. and Joshua Skinner. Now, these are all the names that we have. Are there others that we did not acknowledge? Ricketts, Masters in Computer Science. Yeah. Katrina Ann West. Katrina Ann West, a Jimison graduate. Yeah. Kiran Garner, Masters in Business. Logan. My degree is in refrigeration, air conditioning, and carpentry. Amen. This morning, I praise God for his blessings in opening educational doors at all levels for his people. I would like to take this time to acknowledge all the members of the Education Committee who have served under the leadership of Teresa Anderson. Would each of you please stand? Amen. We thank each of you for your time, effort, and dedication to our church. Sister White in the book Education, page 13, states, Our ideas of education take too narrow and too low a range. There is need of a broader scope, a higher aim. True education means more than the pursuit of a certain course of study. It means more than a preparation for the life that now is. It has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. It is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual powers. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this world and for the higher joy of wider service in the world to come. On the occasion of this celebration, we as a church family desire to recognize, acknowledge, and celebrate the hard work you as graduates have put in in achieving your academic accomplishments over the years. You have not only persisted during the course of these academic challenges, you have come through with flying colors. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord states, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, 
thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. In this text, the Lord declares that he desires his people to be pro to prosper and to flourish. And even beyond that, he says in Deuteronomy 28, 13, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Overall success, my friends, has a condition. For the verse states, if, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and do them. Lately, I've been researching the Proverbs and wise sayings from different cultures from around the world. I would like to share two of them before I take my seat. The first is taken from Native Americans, and it states, you already possess everything necessary to become great because you were born with it. The second is an African proverb, and it is, there is no shortcut to the top of a palm tree. One of my personal sheroes is Miriam Wright Elderman. She is quoted as saying, we should pray for the children who have their nightmares during the daytime. In this quote, she's referencing the fact that there are children in this world who suffer at the hands of the adults who are supposed to be protecting them. What I have learned over this, the course of my 70 plus years on this earth is not to allow anyone to define your potential. Don't allow anyone to label you. Their estimation of you is not who you are. God sees you as his sons and daughters. Now that is not to say that you need not apply yourself. On the contrary, it means that as you apply yourself, that God will bless your efforts as you depend on him for guidance. Allowing the Lord to lead you, that my friends, is the true secret of success. So today, we simply ask you to look around you and see how others before you have achieved great things by depending on God to bring them through. These men and women have persisted and achieved. Whether you aspire to go to college slash university or trade school, through hard work and dependence upon God, your dreams will become a reality. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Morrow. Thank you so very much. One of the goals today, I believe Elder Morrow stated as well, was to have a physical display of individuals, of course, who have come through trade or come through a associate's degree and higher. And we had a number of individuals that walked in on today, but I'm gonna to ask today for our young people to pay close attention at this very moment. I'm gonna ask all those, again, who have an associate's degree or higher, or trade, trade, cosmetology, or any of that right there, please stand to your feet at this time that we may acknowledge you as well. All those individuals 
Come on, stand up where you are. Stand proud all across the sanctuary. Come on, say amen today. We want our young people to be encouraged and inspired. And there may be somebody that says, I want to go back to school. I want to tell you that all things are possible through God. Amen. You'll be seated at this time. The last thing I want to do at this very moment before we go forward today, I want to acknowledge again our uh, teachers, those individuals who work so hard throughout the year, school year. They are enjoying their break right now. Maybe some of them are. Uh, but you all work hard for those 10 months, even longer than that. I'm going to ask you, if you are a professor, a teacher, you work in education, if you would please stand up right now one more time. Come on, say amen to these individuals today. To God the glory. We acknowledge you, we celebrate you, and we thank God for your labor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, before we go into worship today or to our praise and worship today, a few announcements. First of all, let me take this moment to acknowledge and celebrate our guest today. If you are not a member here at First Church, would you please wave at me right now so we may celebrate you right now. Come on, come on, say amen. I see you today. I see you. I've, I've received names earlier with so much going on. We are celebrating your presence here today. One more time. Come wave at me one more time. Those members, oh, praise God, man, it's a life. Would y'all stand, stand up if you don't mind? Stand up. Just please stand. There are a lot of y'all today. I'm sorry. I was, hallelujah, praise God, all around the sanctuary today. And those joining us online as well to God. Members, those around you, would you take a moment right now? Everybody, turn to somebody and greet them right now in Jesus' name. Come on, turn to somebody. Give them a handshake. Give them a hug. Tell you it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Come on, greet somebody in Jesus' name. Graduates, you may have. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's make over these announcements very quickly this morning so we don't prolong you too long today. Uh, vacation Bible School starts this week. Come on, say amen. I'm excited about Vacation Bible School. Oh, what a great time it is to celebrate our young people, for them to be trained all week long. So we're going to invite you parents, Grandparents, please bring your children, please bring your grandchildren to Vacation Bible School. That again, it happens this coming week. We're excited about it. What time is that happening? Anybody know what time is going on? What time? Five to eight, five to eight, five to eight. That's what they say, five to eight, Vacation Bible School. Please join us for a great week in Vacation Bible School. A couple of things, great things that are going on here at First Church uh, our men's ministry department, amen, I love this. Our men's ministry department is launching a back-to-school sneaker giveaway for our inner city boys. That is for our boys in middle school. Middle school, middle school, we are trying to give away 150 pair of sneakers. And we want to present them. Come on, y'all can say amen, do better than that. We want to present them at a school to be announced here in Huntsville. We want you all to go out and to buy brand new pairs of good looking, come on somebody, sneakers. I said good looking sneakers, amen. All right, some of y'all don't know what that is. Good looking, we're not asking y'all to spend money for Jordans, come on say amen. Nope, 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 don't buy anybody no $300 pair of shoes. The devil was alive for that one right there, for that one right there to give him away, to give him away. Now, if you want to buy your own pair, amen, or give your pastor a pair, all right. I like the 11s and the 6s. That's what I like. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. Let me, let me get back to my script. Let me get back to the script. Amen. Listen, yes, yeah, so please go out. We are asking you, please do not spend more than $99. Please do not spend more than $99. We literally want to be a blessing to our inner city schools. How many of y'all know that we read at schools here in Huntsville? Y'all know that? We read here. We go to schools in the city. We take during our school year. Even myself as pastor, we go out every single week and we spend an hour reading to our young people. Y'all can say amen for that. Praise God. We are excited about that thing. But we need for you all to bring those here. Be even begin at the end of this or beginning even next week all the way to the end of July to the end of July we need for you all to make sure 
uh, that you are going forward with our initiatives in regards to mission. We have another mission project, which we're going to do to the homeless, amen, to the homeless in our community. Our brothers and sisters who are uh, down and out right now, we are giving uh, supplies to them. We're giving socks and undergarments. You all have done a great job. I've seen the, the, the receptacle in the lobby being filled up each and every week. We need for you all to step out on faith. How many of y'all, it could be you, it could be you, it could be you. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing today. Somebody says that all of us are about one or two times away from having a paycheck and can be in the same situation. So we need for you all to give. So we have our initiative to our boys, to our boys here in Huntsville. If you are watching online and you are not in the Huntsville area, we want you by all means to be able to cash app or to go online to our uh, website. You can cash app us at, again, FCSDA. HSV, that stands for First Church SDA, then Huntsville HSV, and of course that dollar sign, and put in the memo, kickstart, kickstart in the memo. You can mail a check as well, but by all means, if you all be so kind, as you're going back to school shopping, 150 pair for middle school, not high school, for middle school for our kids. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Amen. Hey, our Pathfinders, are, our path, are you all here today, Pathfinders? Where are our, where are our Pathfinders today? Amen. There they are. I'm, listen, I know we're going to take time out of service today. Pathfinders, would y'all come forward today? Come forward today. We are celebrating them today as well. They are on their way to Campari. Amen. They're on their way to Campari. And they have been doing all kinds of fundraisers. They have been raising money, car washes, and selling goods or when I our game nights we are celebrating them we thank God for these young men and these young women come on amen y'all don't know how to get excited today praise God for these young people let me tell you something at first church we celebrate young people amen that's what we do at first church we celebrate our young people all of them well you and pathfinders are not we want to celebrate every single last one of you all our pathfinders have in their hand Listen, some of y'all have been real blessed. We want y'all to share the blessing. They have in their hand right now some envelopes, some envelopes, and they are going to give the congregation, right? They're going to give the congregation these envelopes. We want individuals right now that will help donate, that will help donate to help them get to, not to Oshkosh, help them get to Camp Marie. Where y'all going? Where they going? Someone on the West Coast. Wyoming, amen. Gillette? All right, that's what y'all call it, Campery. All right, that's what we're going to call it, Campery. We're trying to help y'all get there, and we need for you all to help them get there. Is that all right? This is a long trip, and we want, we're starting early to be a blessing, so we're going to ask at this time, if you will be so kind and you will say, you know what, I don't mind giving. I don't mind sowing a seed to help these young people experience Jesus Christ. And what all Pathfinders is about as well, to help give. Come on, Veronica, you can help me out as well. Amen. Good afternoon, church. So the envelopes that the Pathfinders have, they're numbered 1 through 100. So you will only give what's indicated on the envelope unless you want to give more. Envelope number one, that's $1. If we have 100 individuals to come up and get 100 envelopes, we would have raised $5,000. We currently have at least 350 members here today. We only need 100, only 100. So Pathfinders, take your paper clips off your envelopes. And if we can take two minutes for you to come and get an envelope number one through 100. And that's all we're asking. We only need two minutes for you to do that. And we thank you. Just take the envelope. The instructions are on the envelope. Don't give the Pathfinders any money. Just take the envelope. Amen. We're going to help these young people. We're going to help these young people online as well. Online. If you want to be able to give, you can do the same way. Go online to our, um, our website. Go online to our website as well as you can always cash app us at dollar sign FCSDA HSV. 
That's it right there. Praise God. Look at all these folk coming. Our cameras, can y'all get these folk coming all around today? Look at this crowd of folk, this great cloud of witnesses who are being a blessing. Praise the Lord. All right, they said, listen, we have run out of envelope. Well, here they come, here they come, here they come right now. They just give us some more. All right, come on back. If you, if you didn't receive an envelope, come on back, get your envelope. They say, someone said they ran out. No, we ain't gonna run out of envelopes. <laughs> Whatever we, all right, they said we need more $100 envelopes. Some of y'all asked for too little. Some of y'all asked for, now don't be robbing Peter to pay Paul. The church still needs your offering as well. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all robbing Peter to pay Paul. No, make sure you return your tithe and offering as well. Hey, I'm using my tithe today. No, that tithe goes for a holy purpose. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I think, I think we reached our goal. In three minutes, we didn't raise $5,000. Come on, say amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look, for, no, man, let, let him come. Let him come. Some folks still, try, listen, some of y'all go and get that money. Go and get that money. He, he was trying to give. All right, someone was trying to give. All right, amen. Cash app. All right, it's the cash app again. All right, here's the cash app. Dollar sign. All right, dollar sign F-C-S-D-A-H-S-V. All right. Again, I said one more time. That is one more time. Absolutely. That is dollar sign. So you need to do dollar sign. Go to your cash app app, dollar sign, and then do F C S D A H for Huntsville S V. All right. Those are your initials. And then you need to pop up on your screen and you'll be able to donate right there. Amen. Looks like we all got it there. Somebody said Vitmo. I don't know if we have Vitmo and all right, Zale, somebody's asking for this. Zale, we'll get all that together. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you set that aside. Amen. To God be the glory. Come on, give yourselves a hand today. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much, Pathfinders. Thank you all for being such a giving church. First Church is a giving church, and we praise God for that. Hey, let's be right out your space and bring up praise and worship today. Um, anybody know what happens on Wednesday night? Anybody know what happens on Wednesday nights here at the church? Woo, Lord. Prayer meeting, prayer meeting, prayer meeting. We want to continue to start. This is, we've had now three, and we are going now into one month almost of prayer meeting. Elder uh, Yvonne Collins blew up the house on this past Wednesday night. She preached a word from Psalm 34. Hey, Amen. I was out of town, but I was watching that word, and she blessed us in a marked way. I'll be back on this coming week. Come on, Wednesday night, 6.30 is our war room. Come on, say amen. I said war room. That's what we do on Wednesday night. We pray, and we're going to ask God for his blessings. Come on, stand to your feet, everybody, as we go forward today. There's a lot of announcements, a lot of things going on. Amen. I feel the fresh wind and fresh Fresh anointing in this place right now. I feel it cooling off as well. Praise God. Repeat after me. Say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is in thy gates. For in six days the Lord had made heaven and earth, the sea and all that are in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we now ask God that you would fill this room. Fill the avenues of internet, God, wherever your people are, God, right now, pour out your spirit, God, in this place. Oh, God, may the praise be sweet in your ears. May our hearts be open, oh, God, to the moving of your spirit today. Oh, God, you've been good to us, and God, now may all of the redeemed say so. Have your way, oh, God, for we ask it now in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Remain standing if you can. Praise the Lord, everybody.
Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody came to worship the Lord this morning? Come on, did anybody come to magnify his holy name this morning? He's worthy of all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. The song says everybody praise. Come on, can you put your hands together right there? Yes, Lord. Come on, put your hands on it. Come on, come on. You ought to smile this morning. You ought to be happy to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go. Come on, repeat after me. Say, clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands, all
Hallelujah. Come on, do you feel good this morning, First Church? Is he worthy this morning, First Church? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Says hallelujah, 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 oh hallelujah, hallelujah.
give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hey, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you.
worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you ought to blow the roof off this building. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we bless your great name. God, we bless your great name. God, we give you glory. Yes, Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, Lord. You ought to open your mouth this morning, First Church, and just tell them exactly what you need. He's worthy. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful this morning. Come on, is anybody thankful in the building this morning? Come on, did anybody come with Thanksgiving on their hearts this morning? It could have been you sleeping outside. It could have been you dead in your grave. God, you're worthy, yes, Lord. He's so worthy. God, we bless your great name. God, we bless your great name. May you may be seated. All praises be to the King of Kings. My God, what a mighty God we serve. Thank you, praise team, for that powerful praise and worship service. The verse of the day says, the steps of a good man, woman, boy, and girl are directed, ordered, and established by the Lord when he, she, they delight in his way and busy himself with his every step. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord grasps his hand in support and upholds him. As I was reading that this morning, it took me back to your class skating trip. You remember every year your school would take a skating trip. And I never, ever learned to skate. But I always went on a skating trip. And my mother would be a chaperone and then she became a teacher. And no matter how big I got, as long as I was willing, she would take me around the skating rink. She would hold my hand. She would tell me when to lean, step, and rock. Lean, step, and rock. All the way around the skating rink. No matter what my friends were doing, my mother was hand in hand with me. Even though I didn't know how to skate, even though I couldn't make it through, she told me how to lean, step, and rock. And I didn't have to worry about falling because she was always there to hold me up. The word of God says that when you fall, you will not be utterly cast down for the Lord grasp his hand and in support upholds you or holds you up. So there's somebody here that is waiting on God. Whether you're seven or 77, you're waiting on God when to tell you when to lean into that next season. You're waiting on God to tell you when to step into that next season. You're waiting on God to show you how to rock through that next season but the promise is that even though you may stumble even though you may fall you won't be cast down because the Lord's hand will be with you in that next season the Lord's hand will be upholding you in that next season the Lord's hand will be guiding you in that next season so as we go into our prayer season today I'm just going to pray that the Lord order our steps corporately individually, personally, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally so that we know how to lean, rock, and step in whatever is coming next. Let us pray. Blessed Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you humble that we don't need a middleman to call upon your name. We don't need a go-between to call upon your name. And we come humble, Lord, before, because you already know before we ask what we stand in need of. And you're just waiting for us to invite you into our situation. So, Lord, we invite you at this very moment into our fears of failure. Lord, we invite you into our situation, Lord, about our, our finances. Lord, we invite you into our situation, Lord, showing us how to step through this next season as parents, as children, as students, as teachers, as leaders, workers, and career-oriented individuals, Lord. For we know that as we go, even if we fall, even if we stumble, even if we trip, your hand is reaching out, 
ready to rescue us from our own foolishness, Lord. So we pray that the path before us is illuminated, Lord, that the light shines in the direction that we're supposed to go and all we have to do is walk ye in it. Father, I pray that you be with those, Lord, that are struggling right now with peace of mind. Lord, there have been so many deaths and so many funerals and so much grief, Lord. It is shaking our very foundation. Somebody here, Lord, needs to hear your voice and let them know that even though their loved one is gone, you have not left them. And so, Lord, I pray that you prop them up this day, that you give them a, a, a fortification that their spirit may be strong in their weakest moments. Lord, I pray that you be with those that are battling illness, Lord, those in hospice, those that are at home struggling. Lord, I pray that your hand will reach out to them. And as these words leave my mouth, the power of your hand is touching them and bringing them back even from the grips of death. Father, I ask that you forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Take the taste of those things that will keep us from being the individuals you called us to be. Lord, and last but not least, I ask that you empty all of heaven and you come here and set up shop in this house, filling your manservant from the front and everyone under the sound of his voice to the back, Lord, that we may be transformed this day, knowing that when you come again, we shall hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Happy Sabbath. First Church family, we are celebrating an anniversary today. We are happy to be celebrating the anniversary of our president and pastor and Mrs. Benjamin Jones. Pastor and Mrs. Jones, your church family wish you a happy anniversary and pray that God continues to bless you with many love-filled anniversaries and years to come. We would like to present you with love gifts from your church family. And I have a couple of quotes I'm glad that Elder Morrow used quotes that helped me. And I'm quoting, the best things to hold on to is each other. That's by Audrey Hepburn. And I'm quoting, you know you're in love when you can't fall asleep because reality is finally better than your dreams. That's Dr. Seuss. And last, love him, love her, until your heart stops beating. And I quote Pastor Benjamin Jones. Amen. Amen. Give me that right there. I'm going to take that right there. Man. Take that home with me again. <laughs> I love it. Listen, the Joneses are celebrating 54 years. 54 years. How many for y'all to celebrate this first family today? First church, come on, let's celebrate President, First Lady Jones. We celebrate them as husband and wife today. Not just the titles, as husband and wife. As we prepare to pray, would you remain standing as we prepare to pray for them? I want to say personally how much I appreciate them, not as boss, but as couple. It is absolutely obvious, not just in the pulpit, but in the pew, how much they love each other. And they have set an example for all of us 
what it means to be faithful to one another. And today, I want to say, President Jones, Sister Jones, we love you. We praise God for you. We thank you for your ministry, and we pray that God will continue to take you from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Let's come together. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this family. God, we thank you for marriage. God, you have ordained it from the very beginning of time. God, you instituted it, God, at the very beginning, Father, the Sabbath and marriage. And I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will continue to bless the Jones family. God, you have called them for this holy purpose for this time in their life. And I pray, oh God, that you will continue to keep a hedge of protection around them. I pray, oh God, that you will guard them, that you will bless them, and they're going out and they're coming in. I pray, oh God, in the, the late night hours, Father, that they have, the pillow talk that they have, oh God, may it be sweet. May they continue to love one another, God, and be an example to a dying generation of God that all things are possible when we put you first in our lives. Now, God, continue to keep us in perfect peace as we keep our hearts and minds stayed upon thee is my prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory today. Amen. Amen. The Lord our God, he is truly, truly wonderful. Amen. I should hear a better amen than that. You are alive. You are here with a measure of good mind, I pray. And he has brought us into his house to worship. The last time I came before you, I told you how God was blessing me. Is he blessing you? He is. All right, that's wonderful. That is great. He has not stopped blessing me. And I'm not just talking about material things. I'm talking about the fact that I can see and hear and I can speak. And when I speak, you respond. So I know you're understanding what I am saying. That is a miracle and a blessing from God. It was only about a week ago my husband and myself, we took a trip to Alberta, Canada. And in returning, it was 21 hours, you all. 21 hours. And I think what happened, besides the delay and the cancellations and everything else, the pilot, when he was landing at one of the airports, I think he woke up at the last second. And so we had the biggest bump I have ever felt on a plane ride. I'm telling you, God is merciful. He is good to us. He keeps us at all times. And so how can I come into his house and not praise him? How can I come into his house and not bring an offering in to him to show my love and appreciation for everything that he does for me from one day to the next? I see you have come with your offering today. You have come with your praise and you have come to give your offering because you yourself thank God for what he is doing for you. Don't stop praising him. And only, not only with your voice, but come with your tithe, come with your offering, and come with your praise. The deacons will now come and receive the Lord's tithe and free will offering. And for those of you who have received the Pathfinder's envelope, I'm asking you to please place that in the offering plate at this time. I know many people are giving online. I do give online. I use technology a little bit. So um, there are many who may be giving online today as well. So we thank you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you are such a merciful God. And we just want to praise you today by returning a faithful tithe and giving a love offering. We thank you for the ability to be able to do so. Now bless it and may it go to further your work. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
Come on, say, if you love him, give him praise today. Come on, if you're not ashamed, come on, stand to your feet and just say, God, I praise you right now. Somebody's been waiting all week long to open up your mouth collectively as a congregation to tell God, thank you. I believe he's worthy. I believe it today. Amen. Amen. Won't you remain standing as we go to God in prayer right now. Let's pray. Father, move in this house, God, today through the preaching of your holy word. God, we have heard you loud and clear through song. God, we've heard you in the prayers today. God, we heard you in all that went before, Father. But now we desire to hear you clearly through the holy word of God. So, Father, as you've spoken to me, God, I pray now that you will speak to your people. I pray, God, that you will use me as a tool in your hand and that you, God, will pour me out, God, today that I may declare the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, please, God, have your way. If I've asked you for too little, if I've asked you, God, to do too little, God, God, do more than we ever expected. Lord, help me to lift up Jesus this very moment, for I ask it today in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you have your Bibles, if you can remain standing, if you have your Bibles, your, your tablets, your phone, whatever you may carry the Word of God with today, I invite you to turn with me right now to the Gospel according to Luke today. The Gospel according to Luke. If you can stand, would you all stand in respect of God's Word today? Amen. Let's, let's stand in respect to God's Word. Luke chapter number 12. And beginning now with verse number 13, Luke chapter 12. Anybody come to hear God's Word today? Let me just see if y'all ready today. Luke 12, beginning at verse number 13. When you have it, come on, say amen. amen. Here's what the Word of the Lord says. I love this. The Bible says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he may divide the inheritance with me. And he, Jesus, said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Verse 15, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Take heed and be aware of covetousness. <laughs> For a man's life consists of not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What should I do? Because I have no more room to bestow my fruits. Verse 18. Y'all still reading about verse 18. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, he's talking to himself, thou have much goods laid up for many years. Still talking to himself. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Bible says in verse 20, but God <laughs> said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Verse 21, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. The word of God for the people of God. Oh, I want to preach today on the subject entitled, Don't be an educated fool. Would y'all help me preach today? It's, it's going to be all right. Would you, would you preach today? T turn to your neighbor say, neighbor. Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. Say, neighbor. Don't you be a fool. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Don't you be a fool. Don't you be a fool. Y'all will help me preach today. <laughs> Don't you be a fool. This is 
is amazing because if you read the Gospels, especially in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus really said earlier, don't ever call somebody a fool. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you read Bible, you'll find out that Jesus says that if you call a man a fool or, or say raka, you are in danger of judgment. But I find it interesting today that Jesus begins this particular parable by, by calling a grown man a fool. <laughs> Y'all going to help me preach today. In this particular pericope, we find a story about a man who, by all practical standards of life, was a successful man. In fact, one could argue that this brother in the text today is a highly successful man. The Bible does not tell us what university he graduated from, does not tell us what degrees he has earned. The text doesn't even tell us today what if he was married or had children. All we know <laughs> that this man in the text was a big baller shot caller. <laughs> All we know in the text that this man was the H-N. Y'all are going to help me preach today, won't y'all? All we know in the text today is that this man had his mind on his money and his money on his mind. You see, whenever the Bible leaves out certain details, particularly in a parable, it's so that you might put your own name in this particular story. The Bible calls him a certain man. We don't know his name. We don't know his pedigree. We don't know his background. We don't know too much about the details of his life. But we do know in this text today, all we know is that this man has not always been where he is right now. Y'all can help me preach, won't you, today? Can, can y'all hear me again? This man in our text today, we're introduced to him, but, but this man has not always been so well off. He's not always been where he is right now. He's not always lived the kind of way that he's living right now. He has not always had, y'all going to help me today, what he has right now. This brother in the text has experienced a come up. <laughs> and now, y'all ain't saying nothing today. And now because he has come up, he is now experiencing spiritual amnesia. Be because he has come up, he has forgotten where he's come from on this education day. Because the brother is now, quote, unquote, successful, he has forgotten what the Lord has done in his past. I got to be quick today because I won't keep you alone today. I want to be quick to remind somebody, don't you ever forget what the Lord has done for you. I want to tell somebody today, don't you ever forget where the Lord has brought you from. Don't you ever forget how the Lord has made a way for you. Do I have a witness today? Don't you ever forget how God has blessed your life. Don't you ever forget that it was God that put the clothes on your back, the food on your table. It was God that blessed you to be in your right mind. It was God that provided for you when you cannot provide for yourself. It was not because you are so smart. It was not because of your degree. It was not because of all of the accoutrements of life that you are where you are right now. But do I have a witness that can unashamedly testify, I am what I am all because of God. It was God that made a way for you. It was God that opened doors for you. It was God that helped you all along the way. Don't get it twisted. Everything that we are and all that we have, whether it be little or whether it be much, is come from the hands of God. I love that old school hymn. Y'all know great is thy faithfulness. Anybody know old school hymns? That old school hymn says, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I needed, ooh, God help me preach today. All that I needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. 
reality is that sometimes in the church we start thinking because God has been so good to us, we start thinking that it was us that has been so good. God help me preach this. Sometimes in the church, y'all, we get to the point in our lives where, where God has blessed us with a few things in our life, where, where God has elevated some of us in our lives, that, that we begin to think that it's all about me, myself, and I. It was me that did so well in school. It was I that did so well on my test. It was me that got that thing on my job. No, can we be honest today? You ain't that smart. I use incorrect grammar on purpose. Y'all going to help me preach, won't y'all? It wasn't you that was so good. It wasn't you that, that, that opened up doors. Everything that we have is come from the hands of God. And it would do us well to look back over our lives and point to a God who has made a way. Do I have a witness today that can testify it was God that made a way for me somehow? It was not my smarts. It wasn't my brilliance. It wasn't my last name. It was because G-O-D was looking out for me. Do I have a witness in the house today? I feel like preaching for a few moments today, y'all. When I look back over my life, y'all, and some of y'all always, pastor is so extra. He's always so excited. He's always jumping high. I got a reason to jump. I've got a reason to shout. Because when I look back where God brought me from, and when I think about what God has done in my life, I realized it was nothing that I did. It was not because I was so good. It was not because of the schools I went to. It was all because God smiled down on a brother from Ben Harbor, Michigan, and said, I'm going to bless you just because I'm God. And that's the kind of God we serve. We serve a God that will bless you just because he's God. Can, can I give you a Bible today? Because the Bible says in James chapter 1, dig it today, James chapter 1 and verse 17. I want to help y'all today. James 1 verse 17, the Bible says that every, oh, I love that word, not just a portion of what you have, but the Bible says that every good gift, anybody know God gives good gifts? I'm trying to slow it down, y'all, but I feel God pushing me today, y'all. The Bible says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, whom there is no variableness, neither is a shadow of turning. It was God, and it's still God that's making a way for us right now. Yeah. Education is wonderful, and I am a strong proponent of education. Yeah. I believe in education, y'all. Ah, uh, can I brag y'all on God? Not on me, can I brag on God? When I graduated high school, there were over 200 students in my senior class. And, and because I'm not so smart, I told y'all before, I couldn't even read or write as a third grader. Y'all ain't saying nothing right now. And matter of fact, can I pause and, and remind somebody again that I was that kid that y'all laughed at in school? I, 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 I was, Dr. Hill, that kid, that little black boy in a white school that they pointed their fingers at and, and said that little boy can't read. I was that little boy that was struggling. I was that little boy that on Fridays I would go home crying because we had reading day on Fridays and, and my teachers knew I couldn't read. But they still would make me read sometimes what felt like the longest paragraph in the book. Kids would laugh at me. They'll point their fingers at me. They'll make fun of me, and I felt that small. And I went home one day. Y'all hear me today? I went home one day crying to my parents. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I walked inside the bedroom snotting and crying like a little kid does. And my father looked at me, and, and he, he, he had pity upon me. And days after, my father said, let's sit down and read the Bible. Some, some of y'all going to help me preach today, won't you? He said, let's read the Bible. And he broke open Elder Collins, the King James Version of the Bible. I know y'all heard me say it before, y'all, but I already can't read. How in the world are you going to give a child that can't read the King James Version of the Bible? I'm struggling with simple words. Now I got to go hither to it, where forth cometh thou with. Where that was going, I mean, y'all just, don't nobody talk like 1611. Y'all gonna help me preach after a while. 
But my father was so smart back then because he understood that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. And he understood, y'all, James chapter 1 and verse 5. If anybody lack wisdom, let them ask of God because God gives wisdom without reproach. And I am a living testimony today that when I began to read the word of God for myself, God began to open up my mind. God began to open up my mind. God began to open up my heart. God began to deposit the word of God on the inside. And I started reading. I started comprehending. Fast forward. I graduated high school with a 4.3 grade point average on a four-point scale. Not too bad from a little brother in the hood that could not read. Went on, got my master's degree from Andrews University. Went on and earned. I said earn, 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 earned. I said earn. Y'all ain't going to help me preach today. Nobody gave me this thing right here. This ain't on rent. Come on, y'all ain't going to help me preach today. I wish I had a church in this place. I've been waiting for y'all all week. Amen. Amen. No, no. I went to class. I studied. I cried. Do I have a witness somebody? I fasted. I gave up a few times. Y'all are going to help me preach. But I found out that the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to the one who can endure all the way to the end. I am a strong proponent of education. In fact, if there's anybody that ought to get education, it ought to be little black boys and little brown girls whose ancestors fought for education, who were beat if they were found reading or writing. Ancestors who picked cotton in Alabama and Georgia, y'all gonna help me preach, who, who, who fought and worked through Jim Crow, who earned pennies on the dollar so that a new generation could come along and not have it as bad as that generation that came before. We need an education today. In fact, if you do your research, and I'm pushing this for everybody today, that in fact, if you do your research, you'll find out that the Pew Research Group did a study and found out, and it's not to shame nobody, but, but those that have bachelor's degrees are, are half as likely to be unemployed as their peers who only have a high school degree. Matter of fact, those who get a college degree over their lifetime will earn $1.2 million more in their life than those that do not have a degree. It was found out as well in research that women are more likely to have a bachelor's degree than men. Oh, why y'all didn't say amen? I was, I was trying to help somebody right there. Amen. That, that, that women are always outshining our men. Are y'all hearing me right now? But let me tell you something. Y'all still didn't say amen. That's all right. And I, I pause right there for real, for real, because too often we don't cheer our women on enough for the things that they have done in their educational pursuits. Matter of fact, can I push it, y'all? Can I push it, y'all? We get intimidated with a, black, with a bad black sister who has a hood on her head. Y'all are going to help me preach right now. We get intimidated with a sister that has a robe on her, and we as men don't feel we can approach it. Let me tell you something, y'all. Girl, get your degree. Be the smartest you can be. Don't worry about trying to outshine. No. Got brothers talking about that she got a degree. I don't got nothing. Let me tell you something. If my wife makes more than me, hallelujah, praise the Lord, y'all ain't going to help me preach. I don't have none of them hang-ups at all. Y'all know why? Because it all comes to the same house. If she gets her come up, I'm getting my come up. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in this place today. She make more than me. She do more than me. Well, if she do all that, you ought to get up in the morning and make her breakfast. What you want? Just egg? Come on, somebody. Soft side, runny? What you, come on, what you want? Pancakes? Come on, somebody. Hash browns? Veggie links? Waffles? Y'all ain't help me breathe. Biscuits? Gravy? Intimidated by that? Shoes. Her car, my car. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in this place. <laughs> the reality is, is that our men also need to experience a come up as well. 
Because too often our men are always looking for a quick dollar. So we settle for a quick dollar today and don't realize that if you invest in some education for tomorrow, then you will set your life up for years to come. Not just about trying to get a quick fix today. Not just trying to get some money for right now. No, you ought to set your fa- Matter of fact, the Bible says that you ought to set your family up for your great, great, great grandchildren. Ooh, are, are y'all going to help me preach today? I'm sorry to come like this right now, but I, I don't, and y'all, this is me, and I'm in the spirit, y'all, but I don't believe in being dirt poor. Dirt poor. I can't say the word. Poor. And I'm coming for some of y'all right now. I'm coming for y'all right now. Because some of y'all believe that there's holiness in being poor. The more poor you are, the more closer you are to God. I'm holy because I don't got no money. <laughs> and then you always want to quote the text, foxes have holes and uh, foxes have holes and uh, 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 birds. Some man has nowhere to lay his head. I'm trying to be like Jesus. No. Last time I checked, Jesus owned a cattle on a thousand hills and he won lease in the hill. rent a center didn't own the hill. Come on, somebody. Oh, man, the disciples had some money as well. Amen. Yeah. If they check out Peter's crib in, in, in antiquity, y'all, y'all find out Peter had a mansion, man. Peter had a wife and a big crib. Yeah. Y'all ain't saying that. They was tax collectors. They were big ballers. Matter of fact, uh, Joseph, uh, Daniel, can I go on? Esther, I mean, we can go on in the Bible, y'all. Matter of fact, can I go New Testament right now? Because the Ethiopian eunuch, oh, y'all, y'all know Bible, man? I said the Ethiopian. I know, I know, because y'all got Charleston Heston in y'all mind, and y'all got Ten Commandments, and everybody y'all see don't look like you, but can I tell y'all that all of the folk, Ethiopia is black Africa? Can I tell y'all that all them folk, we invented mathematics, we invented science, Is my mic working today? I said, we invented mathematics, we invented algebra, we invented geometry, we did, we are the original architects of society. Matter of fact, America was built on the back of black people. Are y'all hearing me today? Don't you tell me that we cannot achieve when we have done so much in times past. We are where we are because of people that look like us. Oh, but I don't know math. I don't know science. I can't achieve. No, we invented all of that stuff. We ought to understand somebody today that education is wonderful. But education is not the end of itself. Bible says in, in Proverbs 18, verse 16, the Bible says that a man's gift will make room for him. A man or a woman's gift will make room for them and will bring them before great men and women. Let me tell you something. You want to equip young people, you want to equip yourself now. I felt that in my spirit. And Mr. President, I hate to be so practical like this because some of y'all say he's just too simple. No, I got my degree. I can, go, I can go deep when I want to. Amen. Can I just go right there for a second? Yo, you, 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 before, be, be, before you're trying to get your husband and your wife, get your degree. Come on, somebody. I'm just saying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm just saying. I, I, I know you love him or her, but you might as well go ahead and get that degree first. Amen. I lost 500 amens right there. I, they all walked out. No, but before you get hooked up to I love him. I love him. He's so fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, go to class. Amen. Go to class. Go to class. You, you study him. No, study science. Amen. Study engineering. My sister got a master's degree sitting over there with the computer science. Come on, somebody say amen. She, she got her degree. Amen. Are you married yet? No, amen. Come on, somebody. Stand up. Come on, stand up real quick. Amen. Don't look at the girl right there. Amen. Brothers, come on, brothers. Brothers, brothers. Show come up. Come on, somebody. No. 
Your gift will make room for you. But the real gift is knowing who God is. Because when you know who God is, God will put you in position that can no man put you in. Can, can I preach today, y'all, somebody? Because you need to understand that when you know God, God will drop your name in boardrooms that you are not qualified to be a part of. And people were trying to figure out how they know your name is because God will put you in position. I had all kind of folk, can I be real? I had all kind of folk trying to figure out how did you end up at first church? How did you get first church? There was a whole line of folk trying to get first church. Well, the truth is, I ain't never want to come here. I was happy where I was. And they was hating on me. How you get this? How you get that? Can I tell y'all, God will put you in position to be a blessing when everybody else is hating on Joseph. When everybody else is hating on Joseph, God will put you in position to be a blessing. And now that I'm here, I don't want to go anywhere. Come on, somebody. I love this place. I, I was like, God, if I hadn't known it would have been this good. The man in our text has not always been where he's at right now. Matter of fact, can, can, I, can, I, can I exit the text, y'all? I, I love to exegete the pericope every single week. And in Luke chapter 12, verse 13, an argument, an argument has broke out between brothers. And apparently, somebody in the family has died. And now the brothers desire to get his portion of the inheritance. Y'all know what happens in our houses when somebody dies? Y'all, let somebody die. They got a little something left behind. We'll fight over TVs, dressers, chiffaros. <laughs> Y'all heard that word in a long time. Washer, dryer, knives, plates, forks, records, A tracks. And then we won't speak to folk for years. This man in the text today has come to Jesus, and he's not coming to Jesus for salvation. He's coming to Jesus because he wants the Messiah to settle a dispute amongst family members. Now, when Jesus sees the man, he, he looks at the man and says, man, who made me a judge? Who made me an arbitrator over your good? So, so Jesus says, let me just kind of break down your parable, break down your life. He says in this parable in Luke, he says uh, that a man uh, had a whole lot of wealth. Matter of fact, man had so much wealth, he didn't know what to do with his wealth. And I did my study and I read the text and I found out that this man utters about 60 words come from his mouth. 60 words come from this man's mouth. If you count them up, you will see that in 60 words, he says, I am my more than 15 times. These personal pronouns mess me up. Because if you read the text in, in his fullness, man, the brother in the text, go back to the beginning, brother in the text, he, he looks at the text and he says, what should I do? Because I have no room to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will bestow all of my fruits and all of my goods. And I will say to my soul, y'all reading the Bible today, my soul what have I done all these years? I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. He keeps on saying, I am my over and over again. The brother has lost the capacity to say uh, in this text, he's lost the capacity to say we and our. There's an African proverb, and for those from the motherland, y'all may want to help me say it correctly, but I believe it's Ubuntu. And Ubuntu simply means I am because you are. In the Western culture, we have turned this thing around and it says that you get yours, I get mine. You do you, I do me. 
And in a Western culture, we all are fighting for our own place on the block. But in African culture, they realize that it's not because of, my, of myself. I am because of the people around me. I am because somebody helped me along the way. Can I tell somebody that no matter where you are today, somebody helped you get there? Wherever you have achieved, it may be much or little. It's because somebody helped you along the way. This man in our text has forgotten that some. Somebody helped him along the way. Everybody needs help at some point in your life. Can I say it again? Everybody needs somebody at some point in your life. I know we've seen that old gospel song talk about I don't need nobody but Jesus. The devil is a lie. You need somebody to help you along the way. Somebody, matter of fact, you will never get to where you are by yourself. From the moment you was born, somebody had to help you get into this world. Somebody helped you get out. Somebody fed you. Somebody changed your diapers, your nasty diapers. Somebody helped you along the way. In fact, somebody is counting upon you right now. I want to tell my brothers today, your family is counting on you, my brothers. Be the best husband to your wife that you can be. Amen. Amen. That was a weak amen. 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 Can I say it again? Be the best husband that you can be for your wife. Fight for your family. Spend time with your children. Pray for your children. Educate your children. Bring your children to Sabbath school and vacation Bible school. Don't get so busy trying to make a living that you forget what you're living for. Man was trying to make a living and spend so much time making a living that he he climbed the corporate ladder. And when he got to the top of the ladder, he leaned over and forgot that he was leaning on the wrong building. My sisters, you ought to be the best husband for your man. Oh, can I flip that? Can I say say it again? Amen. My sisters. Amen. Ain't that kind of party, Helen. My sisters, be the best husband for your man. Lord, God must be trying to tell me something. (laughs) Women, love your... You you know, the crazy thing is, is that we spend so much time living together that we don't even know who we're living with. You know what's jacked up about about life is that we spend so much time trying to accumulate stuff that the stuff ends up having you. Somebody say, "I I need a bigger house. No, it may not be you need a bigger house. You may need to get rid of some of the stuff in your house. Do you know what Jesus says the problem with the Laodicean church is? He says that we're lukewarm, that that we're neither hot nor cold. In other words, what Jesus is really saying is that that we have really just become uh, accustomed to having so much that that we have become lukewarm in our walk with God. And, And can I tell somebody today that life is not promise. Tomorrow is not promise. God help me preach today. You ought to spend time with your family. You ought to go on vacation with your family. I say you ought to go on vacation with your family. The church will be here when you get back. Do I have a witness, somebody? Uh, I lost amens once again. I tell some preacher, watch it. Some of the preachers think it's, it's holy not to take a vacation. I got to be in a pulpit every single week. No, you're going to look up and see me gone. Do I have a witness, somebody? I am. I I love y'all, amen. I love to preach to y'all and see y'all smiling faces, but I love my wife more than I love y'all. Do I have a witness, somebody? I'm just keeping it real, amen. Because when I die, half of y'all gonna show up, two of y'all gonna cry. And then in six months, somebody else gonna be standing right here. 
Tell me, who, what was that name of that other guy that was here? He was so energetic. He was so passionate. He loved God. But what was his name? No, 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 no. You need to understand the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, I got a little education. Amen. Also can research. The second law of thermodynamics says that everything will eventually run down. Everything will run down. It doesn't matter how cute you are right now, you won't always be as cute as you are right now. <laughs> doesn't matter how fine you are right now, how fine Instagram says you are, TikTok, how handsome you are, your muscles will look good today, but just watch gravity. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Everything that was up, come on, somebody, eventually comes on back. You cute today. Keep on living, amen. You'll start seeing some. The brother in our text doesn't have sense. Not only does he have spiritual amnesia, but Jesus now has to confront him and us. The Bible says that this man's ground became plentiful. He's become rich in himself, and he, he thinks to himself. He has a whole conversation to himself. Self, woo, look at me. I've made it. I've achieved so much. I've gotten so much good. I, I've done so well. I, I've been a blessing to myself, and woo, all of my stuff. And he says, man, look at all this stuff. I got stuff for days. I got stuff for days. I got stuff for years. He says, man, I got so much stuff. What must I do? He says, I know what I got to do. I must now tear down my barns. And I got to build bigger barns. I'm almost done. I got to tear down my barns. I, I got to build bigger barns because God has blessed me with so much stuff. And I would argue, saints of God, that sometimes God is cursed because he's blessed us with so much. And I would argue for some of us, not all of us, that God cannot bless us the way that he wants to bless us because he knows that too many of us would be stingy with our blessing. Y'all ain't saying amen. amen. <laughs> Sometimes God can't bless you because you won't help somebody else. You praying for a financial breakthrough and God says, I can't give you a financial breakthrough because you can't even give me back 10%. You, you want this from me, but, but you won't even be faithful in the small stuff that I've asked you to do. Jesus says the man's life is not caught up in the things that you have. Because the reality is, is that when you get caught up with the things you have, the things that has you. And we become idle to so much stuff. I was somewhere this, past, this week with my wife, and we was in the mall, and I was laughing at this couple. We were shopping together in the mall. And I like to shop with my wife, amen. I like to hang out with her. Matter of fact, wherever she is, that's where I want to be in. Just saying, I'm like that, amen, for real, for real. I, I like to hang out with her. We was at a mall, and I was listening to a conversation between a father. It looked like maybe, I don't know, uh, foster children or somebody, but the father and the mother, they were older, and they were trying to convince these two young people, true story, convince these two young people that they ought to get name brand stuff. I know that sounds oxymoronic right there. They were, the older adults were trying to convince the two younger ones. And the girl, I wanted to ask how old she was, but I couldn't jump in their conversation because I ain't that brother, but, but I wanted to. Uh, she looked like she was about 15, 16, and I was, I was eavesdropping to the conversation, and the girl was like, no, nah, I, I don't need Gucci and Prada. When she said, I was like, who this? And she's like, no, no, no. She said, I'm not impressed by a name. And because, it, 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 y'all, it looked like foster kids because the mother and the father were not, y'all, are y'all hearing me right now? They, 
adopted. They, they, and she was trying to get, he was, they were like, no, you, you need to have something on your shirt. And you need to wear this. And the girl was like, I told you, I, I'm not impressed by somebody else's name. And, and here's what's going to shout you. Here's what's going to shout you. The boy stepped in and says, I like my own name better than I like the name of somebody else. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in this place today. He, he said, I like my own name better than somebody else. I said to that brother, that brother is going to go somewhere in life because he understands that you can't spend $500 on some stuff and have a $2 brain. Come on, somebody. You, you can't put all your money on your feet and not invest in your head. Y'all are going to help me preach in this place today. Jesus says this man's a fool because he has now spent so much time trying to accumulate stuff that he's forgotten that God is the central figure in his life. And can I tell somebody today, I don't understand church people who can sit down for two hours with your arms folded talking about, well, I wish this. And now I'm going to tell you something. You ought to think back over your life and see everything that God has done for you. You ought to look back over your life and see how God has made some ways in your life. I wish somebody would holler right now and look back and say, man, if it had not been for the goodness of God, I wouldn't be where I am right now. It's not about what you have, but it's about who has you. And does anybody know that when God has you, God will open up the windows of heaven. He'll pour out some blessings that there shall not be room enough to receive. I'm a living witness, somebody, that God will make a way somehow. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but God will show up, and he'll show up right on time. David said, I've been young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Everything that we have is because of God. And it's not just about trying to get stuff. But the reality is, is that the more God gives you, you ought to give it away. Are y'all going to help me finish my sermon today? Because I found out that when you give it away, you make room for God to do more in your own life. I'm done. Are y'all hearing me today? I, I say when you give it away, you make room for God. Okay, some of y'all don't know Bible. God said give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. I need a, anybody need some good measure today? I, 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 need a, I have a box called good measure. Come on, somebody. I press down. Now, this is, why, this is why I love God. Because God is so much God that, that God says, I, when you give, it's reciprocal. I'm, I'm going to make, so if you give your time, God's I'm going to give your time back. If you get your talents, I'm going to give your talents back. And we should never be in church trying to urge you, force you, beg you to serve God with your educated self. Why, why do I have to beg you to serve God? You ought to wake up in the morning and say, well, shoot, he woke me up today. He started me on my way. What can I render unto God who's been so good to me? You ought to be looking for a way to give back to God. You ought to be looking for a way to be a blessing to God. I'm done. We live in a world where everybody's now trying to get something from church. Get something. Y'all going to help me preach it in this thing, right? Get something from God. And we come to church, I want to get something from God. I want to get, what can I get out of church? What can God do for me? I need a word. I want to hear this song or that song. If that man or woman ain't preaching, I ain't coming. They don't sing my song, I'm mad and upset at church. Why are you so hot in here? I don't know. Why they sing so long? Why he preach so long? 
Why he get so excited every week? Can't he just be quiet? Can't he just preach short messages? Can't we just get out of church in 15 minutes? Well, if you like microwave blessings, then you might as well serve a microwave God. But if I could preach for my last few moments say, I don't serve a microwave God. I serve a God who likes to cook things up and who likes to put it all together. And I serve a God who will whip up some blessings and will press them down, shake them together, and run them over. I don't come looking to get something from God. I've come to lift God up. I didn't come to get something from God. I've come to tell good how good God's been. Do I have a witness somebody that can tell me right now? I know, Pastor Lee, that my God is good. I've seen God work miracles. I am a miracle. I've seen God open up the doors. I've seen God qualify me for stuff I shouldn't be qualified for. I've seen God do so much. What's so little? Because it's God that makes a way for us. God that provides. I feel like, listen, I got to stop. I'm done. I'm stopped. I keep it too long. God, don't urge me because I talk about God all day. He's been so good. I said, he's been so good. I know y'all don't like shouting in church, y'all, but he's been so good. Every time I turn around, he keeps on making a way. I said, every time I turn around, he makes a way. Every time I look up, God is providing for me. Do I have a witness, somebody? I, I, I've seen God go. Ahead, I, I've seen God do little. Matter of fact, they say He'll do. He, when you give God what you have, He'll take your little bit and make much when it's in His hands. Do I have a witness, somebody? I'm trying to stop y'all, but I feel like lifting Him up right now. I, I mean, I, I've seen God take the least and do stuff that can't nobody else do. I've seen God open up doors. And I've also learned, watch me now, watch me now. I've also learned, can I, can I preach to y'all over here in this corner? I feel y'all been left out in the sermon today. I also found out that you ought to praise God in the hallway before the door opens up. If you're waiting on the door to open up, don't wait to give God praise when the door opens up. That's cheap praise. Okay, yeah, they, they were not serious over there, y'all. They, they weren't serious. Can I talk to y'all right now? Uh, I found out, y'all, that, that while you are praising God in the hallway, God says, ah, 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 y'all mature. Because them over there, they only wait to see the blessing. But some of y'all know you ought to get your praise on before the blessing even shows up. Oh, thank y'all today. Thank y'all today. Can I tell somebody right now? You ought to get your praise dance together in advance. Okay, y'all ain't gonna help me preach. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just feel like it today, y'all. Um, in football, in football, hey, y'all seen basketball and football, they, they got little moves. Y'all seen all that stuff? Pass here, come here real quick. Pass here real quick. I, I just need to help them real quick. We didn't practice nothing. We don't know nothing. But when we greet each other, we like, whoa, what up? Woo! -hoo. Yep, good. Yeah. And football, basketball, right? They be like, oh, when they do something well, or when they come out on the scene, they be like, yo, what up? What up? They rehearsed their celebration. Anybody remember, I know it's old school, y'all remember the Chicago Bears, the 1980 Bears, 90 Bears, early. Y'all remember when they got a touchdown and they were, do, y all, y all, I know it's holy, I, I know it's holy, but y'all remember that thing right there? Some of y'all looking like that. Some of y'all looking like, oh Lord. They, they would take the, y'all, y'all, okay, y'all don't know that thing right there? Some of y'all know stink land, but y'all don't know that thing right there. Okay, 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 okay.
Kelsey, Kelsey, when, when, when they get a touchdown, when, when Kansas City gets a touchdown. Oh, now he's on. Now he's on. He's like, huh? They, 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 they. And they, Philadelphia, they, they do all kind of bird. And I don't understand Christians who God has done so much, who God has blessed with so much. I don't understand how Christians can show up at church like this. They're going to force me to praise. They're going to force me to say something. No, if we can come to the game and go, oh, 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 come on, somebody, then surely you can say, you know what? I'm glad that God has provided for me. I didn't get all that I have because of myself. I came to God, and God made a way. Somebody shout right now, God will make a way. God will provide up doors. God will do immensely of more than you can imagine. So when I come to church every now and then, come on somebody, come on somebody, I've got to give somebody a handshake. I've got to tell somebody it was because God, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, seeking to rise no more, but then the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the water from depression from suicidal ideation from a bad marriage from children from, from, from heartache God brought me out that's somebody's testimony today. You ought to know that God is with you. You ought to know that God provides. But don't you get wrapped up in the stuff more than you get wrapped up in God. Keep standing, I'm done. Keep standing if you can. If you're not standing, you can stand. Watch this. Jesus, I'm done. Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, get ready to come to God today. Get ready to come to God, somebody. Jesus looks at the brother in a parable. Watch the text, y'all. Watch the text. Listen, I'm done. Listen. Good God. Over 15 times the brother said, I, I, me, my, my soul. My stuff. He worked so hard for stuff that the stuff now has him. And y'all know when you die, you don't take nothing with you to the grave. All that stuff you have, all that stuff God's blessed you with, somebody else is going to benefit from it. That's why everything up in my house, we use it. Come on, somebody. I wear all my clothes. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach this thing. I wear all my shoes. Come on, somebody. Because I refuse to die and my wife get remarried and that new Negro wear my stuff. Nope. 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 I know y'all holy. I know y'all think like that. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We don't have no rooms in our house with plastic over the chairs. Nope. Every room we got, you can sit down in that room. Y'all are going to help me preach. You can't take your stuff with you. Nobody is buried in their stuff. So then why, why, why get so wrapped up in it? that you lose your own salvation. You know what Jesus ends the story? Jesus says, you fool. He says, tomorrow, your life is required of you. Then whose stuff will it be? 
Let me tell you how not to be a fool. Can I tell you how not to be a fool? Shh, just a little bit down. I'm done. Ain't get ready to come to Christ. How not to be a fool? Don't let material goods possess you. I am not saying that the material stuff is not good. No, man. Praise God for a nice car. Amen. Praise God for nice houses, for nice stuff. It's God that gives it, but don't get wrapped up in it. This generation, more than any other generation, is wrapped up in materialism. For Instagram, IG. You will buy stuff, go places just for somebody else to see what you have. You will spend $5,000 on something and don't have money to pay your mortgage or your rent. I saw a Negro, I saw a dude, I'm sorry, I saw a guy. He had a Bentley, a Bentley, he had a Bentley. And put rims on a Bentley. Negro, that's stupid. It's also stupid for you to spend more on sound for your car than your car costs. All preaching, y'all ain't saying nothing though. Silly. No, invest. He's a fool because materialism had him. He was a fool because he never recognized God in his life. And that's why I'm talking about celebrating. That's why I'm talking about giving God praise. The day I die, I'm going to shout. I'm going to dance. I'm going to clap. I'm going to wave my hands. Because I know who my help comes from. How not to be a fool? Give, give, give. Don't be an educated fool. Give your time, talents, temple, and treasure to God. Give your time, talents, temple, treasure to God. If you want to live your best life, it starts with you giving yourself to God. And right now, somebody today says, you know what, Doc, that's, that sounds good. I, I mean, to try that thing, let me tell you something, better than a money-back guarantee. You can't be God ever. You can't ever be Him, ever. I'm telling y'all, I know what I'm talking about. This ain't something I read. No, I know it for myself. If you need to come up in your life, I said to come up in your life, you need to come up, whether it's rededication, whether it's baptism, whether it's some prayer, I don't know what it is. I need for you right now to come and join me down at this altar right now. Wherever you are in the balcony, it's not too far to walk. Wherever you are, you need a come up in your life. The best come up is coming to Jesus. I'm going to ask you to start walking right now. Start walking right now. You need God right now. You need God to do something special in your life. And you're not ashamed to say, God, I, I want it. I need it. If that's you right now, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't be ashamed today. He's good like that. Hallelujah. God bless you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You need to come up. You need to come up. Press in, press in, press in. Come closer, come closer. Come closer. You need to come up. I'm telling you, the only way that you're going to come up is accepting Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Say you could be rich in these things of this world, but what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You're still coming right now. You're coming. I want to pray for you in one minute. I want to pray for you in one minute. I got one more thing to say. Some of y'all gonna get real upset right now. I'm back. I'm praying for you. Some of y'all gonna get real upset. I said earlier, the reason why God can't bless some of y'all is because you're too stingy. You got yours now. You can't give back to somebody else. And let me tell you something. God cannot bless closed hands. Can, 
can, can I say that? God cannot bless closed hands. Open your hands to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And then with those same hands, be a blessing to somebody else. Look for somebody to bless. Look to give to somebody. Look around. Somebody is in need right now. And you are their answer to prayer. When I was praying, thinking about this thing this week, God said, said tell the people that Adventists have the hardest time because God's blessed us so much, you bougie and now you won't give to somebody else. You degreed, you got, you got your education, you got your diet, you got your doctrine, but you don't know Jesus. And Huntsville has it bad. Can I mess y'all up right now? Some folks, will, well, I can't go to that church because I don't, I don't have a degree. I can't go there because all those people are so, so this and so that. Let me tell you something. Everybody is equal at the cross of Jesus Christ, whether you have much or whether you have little. There's no big eyes and little U's at the cross. At the end of the day, thank you, Holy Ghost. At the end of the day, God is not going to say, well done, you folk who have degrees. Well done, Adventists. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, well done, thy good and faithful service. Folk who know how to give back to God and to give to each other. The biggest come up is when you come to Christ every single day. And then you start looking for somebody else to be a blessing to. How can I serve? How can I be a blessing? I preach long enough. Somebody right now is saying, Pastor, I believe all that. But God's not yet showed up in my life. I'm going to tell you right now, he is there. He's there right now. He's there right now waiting, waiting, waiting for you to surrender yourself wholly to him. I hear you, God. I hear you, God, right now. I hear you. I, I want to call somebody right now. You may be at the altar right now. And you have a form of godliness. Don't, don't worry about it right now. You, you know how to say amen. You, you know all the things about Sabbath. But you don't know Jesus. His nature is to give. For God so loved the world that he gave. His nature is to love. He's a fool because he has much but not Jesus somebody today would you raise your hand right now if you want to say Jesus and this, 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 this is for real I see your hand brother I see your hand brothers I see you right now you want God in your life right now you want God you want to make a decision for God right now just raise your hand wherever you are I see you sister I see you girl I see you I'm so proud of y'all I love y'all I see you, sis. God bless you. You want to make a decision right here. Hey, somebody's going to walk up to you right now. It's not impersonal. They want to capture your information. Because the same way we saw these three today get baptized and walk with God, we want you all to do the same thing, to walk with God in a new way. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you.
fight for your family. Fight for your family. Sister, fight for your family. Do not let the hellish torch of Satan separate you from the ones you love. off this summer and, and reconnect as a family. Let me ask you a question. You need, you, somebody needs something real special right now. You, you need something right now. Not, not just the ordinary. I mean, you need, you need something from God. Raise your hand where you are. Raise your hand. I want to pray for you specifically. Something serious. You need something serious from God. raise it. You need something serious. Father, in Jesus' name, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Lord, Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 declares that it is you who gives us the power even to get wealth. I don't know what your children stand in need of, but I know you. And I know, God, that you never fail. So for every raised hand, for every open heart, God, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you will look upon your children, God, right now. Whatever, whatever they stand in need of, please, God, fail not to grant it. And Lord, teach us in the waiting process even though it may be hard teach us to still praise you worship you thank you even in the hallway before the door is open now unto the king eternal to the only wise God our savior Lord may our possessions never own us may we pursue the best education, that of Jesus, the living Christ. Help every man, woman, boy, and girl to live for you so that when you come back, God, we will hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. You've been faithful, faithful over a few things. Now you're going to make us ruler over much. God, until that day, walk with us talk with us. Help us to be a blessing to others. And God, may we have the testimony of our ancestors. We can't beat God giving no matter how we try. For the more we give, the more you give back to us. For it's in Jesus' name today. And everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise today. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. Go real quick. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Um, I looked up and I saw the Francis here today. The Francis has been traveling the country. I saw y'all today. God bless y'all today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Also, I want to recognize today, I want to recognize Mr. and Mrs. Mel Walker from Northern California. Y'all here, the Walkers, are y'all still here from Northern California? God bless y'all today. Amen. And then Larry and Barbara McCall visiting from New York today as well. Amen. Praise God for you today. 
And then last but not least, Cliff Brown and daughter Andrea, y'all moved, y'all from Florida, y'all moved, y'all here today. Where are y'all? Y'all still here today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we have our benediction, I just want to say this. Listen, we're gonna be, I'm going to be traveling just a little bit this summer. Amen. Just a little bit this summer. Going to do preaching and doing a little meeting in, in uh, New York. In New York. Uh, short meeting in New York. Going to preach a crusade. Short crusade in New York. Somebody ask for your prayers. Amen. 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 Ask for your prayers. Uh-huh. I got you. Ask, yep, yep, yep. Ask for your prayer. I'm just being very. I, I need y'all to pray for me. Amen. There's so much going on. I'm praying for those folk that, that, that the folk in North Bronx. Amen. North Bronx. If you know somebody in New York and around that North Bronx area, Grand Concourse, North Bronx, there are several churches getting together. And they've invited me to come and to preach this crusade for them. And we're going to go and do that on this coming week, this coming week. Uh, for the next couple, all right? For the next couple. You're in good hands, amen. You're in good hands. You're in good hands. You're in good hands. But I do want you all to pray for me and my family. They'll be joining me on the last of this month as we end that crusade, amen? Amen. amen. Praying for souls to be saved. I'm going to invite uh, those that got baptized today. I'm going to invite you to come forward at this time. We're going to celebrate you all today. Come on. Ahmad, come on, sir. Ahmad, I saw you earlier. Baker. Allison. Well, where are you? There she is. There they are. There they are. Amen. Come on, y'all. We're going to celebrate them today. Amen. We praise God today. We have a gift we want to give you today. Amen. Am I doing it? Okay. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand as we get prepared to leave together today. Amen. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. Did you receive God's word today? Amen. Come on, did y'all receive God's word today? Amen. When they ask you what he preached about, you know what to tell them today. Amen. <laughs> Give back to God. Be faithful to God. Honor God. Don't be stingy. Pursue education, but pursue God more than anything else. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And you're going out and you're coming in and your labor and your leisure. May the peace of God be upon your life henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give your neighbor a handshake. Give them a hug. Say amen. It was good to see your face in this place. God bless you. experience today. We certainly enjoyed having you with us either online or on site because we are First Digital, First Digital SDA Church here located in the city of Huntsville, Alabama. God has blessed us. We are digital. We are physical and digital. Oh, what a powerful message today. Don't be an educated fool. I pray to God that I am not. We've got a few announcements for you, so please pay attention. I need to give you a correction on an announcement today. I mentioned about the fact that we are serving the uh, Derrick Street homeless community. You are donating uh, brand new undergarments and toiletries for both men and women. That date that we are gonna do it is not gonna be today, as in the 8th of July, but will actually be on the 19th of 19th 
of August. We ask you to please be mindful of that as we continue to move forward in that word. Also, we want you to know the fact that we will probably, we had a super car wash schedule for the Pathfinders. I believe that is still gonna be on tomorrow, July, 8, July 9th. We're gonna have that. Also, for those of you who wish to participate in our giving to the homeless community, we ask that you once again will make a contribution. If you can't, bring your items on site to our donation um, of, of receptacles in the lobby, then make a donation by Cash App. That donation will be, the Cash App will be dollar sign FC First Church, SDA, which is Seventh-day Adventist, and HSV, which is Huntsville. So that will be dollar sign FC, SDA, HSV. Make that donation, and we thank you in advance for that donation. Also today, as you notice, we are celebrating Education Day. We are celebrating and affirming the graduates at all levels from kindergarten, eighth grade, high school, associate's degrees, college degrees, master's, and other graduate levels. Because we're an educational community, and education is such a formidable part of our educational experience. So we thank you for attending worship with us. You can also get other announcements and other, other bits of information. Either go to our Facebook page or to our website. And thank you in advance for being a part of our worship experience. If you enjoyed what you saw, and if the worship experience is becoming to you, if you are in our area, if it is becoming to you, then you should be coming to us. Thank you, God bless you. Again, my name is Tim Olson. I am from First Fidgetal SDA Church. Digital because we are physical, and digital because we are digital. Online, on site, high tech, and high touch. Thank you, and God bless you on this Sabbath day. Bye-bye.